The second owner that we had was John Spano. I don't think I need to tell you about that guy. I mean, the it's fake just, rich guy. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you one. Yeah, fake rich guy. I don't know how he get that. Close. He got very close to getting control of it. But great movie on that ESPN deal, yeah. right? Thirty for thirty. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm at the uh, I'm at home, and John Spano calls me at home and says, "You got to get over here to the Garden City Hotel. It's a nice hotel in, on Long Island." So I get there, and he's like, "Mr. Big Shot, he's got a little roped off area. It's like a, it's like a it, it's like a disco." kind of a place. They turn it into a disco at night. So we talk hockey for a little while. And then he says to me, they'll be here in a little while. I said, what do you mean, John? Who's going to be here in a little while? The girls. He said, first they'll do each other, then they'll do us. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. Can't make it up. But <laughs> So anyway, he comes, he goes. How he were goes they? What's that? I said, how were they? Yeah, no, no. I I snuck out. Through the, I snuck out through the kitchen. I know. Yeah, yeah. Back uh, to the GM's office. Yeah. So, anyway, then who who were next? Milstein and Gluckster. At one point, where things were going well, Stephen Gluckstern said, "We're thinking about the budget." He said, "It's going to be somewhere like twenty five, fifteen, or five. I mean, we need twenty five, fifteen, or five. He said, "Well." 15, you know, we'll lose a little money. 25, we'll lose a lot of money. But if we go to five with a TD contract, we'll actually make money. I said, you got to be shit. And fortunately, that didn't come to pass. But that's the same group that declared the Coliseum constructively abandoned and moved everybody out of the office. And and the office people had to go into the city because Milstein was a... Uh, real estate guy and we had to move over you know to some other crappy building on long island for a while um and then they lost that lawsuit they were trying to get a new building built but anyway they 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 didn't last very long um and so then came charles wong and sanjay kumar and sanjay was the guy i reported to until he and Charles had a falling out, and he, he had a falling out with the law. He wound up serving, I think, 12 years for fraud. Holy uh, worked shit. at Computer Associates. And then Charles came, and he he became the the guy that I reported to. And that was interesting. Was I that a reason for some of stories. these trades, for, for some of these iconic trades? Oh, my trades? God. It was just, it was, he was involved in everything. Like, I had a he deal for nothing Jason. about hockey, correct? What? He knew absolutely nothing about hockey. No, he didn't right? know anything about hockey. He knew nothing about hockey. But we had a deal with Jason Allison and with the Bruins. Pretty good player. And our coach that year was Peter Laviolette, who knew him from Boston. And one of the guys that was in the trade from our end was Dave Scatcher. I was at the draft and I called Charles and I said, I'm going to make this deal. And I listed the guys that were involved. And he said, You can't make that deal. I said, Why? He said, because Dave Scatchard's in the deal. Dave Scatchard was like a fourth, third, fourth line player for us. And I said, well, so what? He said, well, he's the kind of guy we want. He visits sick kids in hospitals. Oh, shit. I mean, I mean, I, that's nice that he does visit sick kids in hospitals, but we're trying to run a hockey team, not a, you know, rehabilitation award. <laughs> it was just, and so we wound up getting yashing, and I knew from the beginning that that was going to be, you know, interesting. And we went out immediately, got Mike Pekka and Chris Osgood, and we had a 40-point swing to the positive side that year. But we were fundamentally flawed in the middle with Yashin. Um, and, you know, but I didn't care at that point. I, I just didn't care. I wanted, to, I wanted to make it last. I was finally making some good money. And I wanted to make it last as long as I could. I can tell you another Charles story. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to do whatever he says. I like. Well, I, I, after that, after he was in... Well, Di Pietro was, a, you know, our high first draft pick, and and he came to the end of his first contract. His end of his third year was not a great year, so I think he was making a million. And I said, "Listen, Charles, a million one, a million two. That's, that's where we should be with this, you know." And um, he said, "Okay, well, let's offer him a million five and tell him for every day he doesn't take it, we're going to take fifty thousand dollars off." Not my favorite. 
method of negotiation, especially when his agent's Bob Yore. So anyway, the next day, I'm going to meet with him at the Garden City Hotel again, the Garden City Hotel. And I, I, count, I, I walk up to him and he said, we signed Rick DiPietro. I said, we signed Rick DiPietro? <laughs> I said, how much did we pay him? Uh, Two million dollars. Like, what the... I said, you should just cut my legs out. I can't go negotiate with anybody anymore. It's just, some, it'll be impossible for, for me to be taken seriously. So anyway, that was what I was up against. And I will tell you that, you know, at the end of my five, five year contract, I had to sign another contract, but I didn't. Um, he said, okay, let's give you a new contract, but uh, it's going to be no contract. It's going to be an evergreen co uh, contract and we'll just shake hands on it. So if I ever fire you in the middle of the year, you'll still get another, you get that year and the year after that. And that was my contract. I mean, who was stupid enough to do that? I guess I, I was. I don't even but think anyway, that's legal now. Yeah. Anyway, um, one year, you know, I'd always said, I wish I, I wanted to make a million bucks. I was making like seven fifty something at the time. And uh, we didn't have a great year. But anyway, he wanted to take me out to lunch. And he says to me, okay, Mike. Uh, I'm going to give you a bonus. I said, why are you going to give me a bonus? I mean, I, it was a shitty year. He said, yet you always said you wanted to make a million dollars, so I'm going to give you a $250,000 bonus. There it was in the next paycheck. Holy so, shit. Any, anyway, I'd had enough of being general manager at some point, so I, I said to him on a plane ride out to the GM meetings that you know I was, you know, I was done. I said, why don't you let me take a run at the business side? You know, maybe I can because we were a mess there too. And so he said, okay. And, um, you know, about a year later, he, he came in to see me and said, you know, we got to hire a new coach, a new general manager. Ouch, I should fall back on that. Before I kind of resigned as GM, um, he, I told him that, and then he went out to try to find a GM. It took him three months, three months of searching. And then he came in one day and said, I found a new coach and a new general manager. And I said, don't tell me, Neil Smith and Ted Noel. And he, he was jaw dropped. And I said, you know, I have a few friends in the league. I know what's going on. And he said, well, what do you think? They said, I think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> and he didn't talk to me for two days after that. <clears throat> but um, on the day of the announcement, he decided he wanted, he wanted to have a board of governors sort of running the team. And the announcement, first the announcement was he announced, he announced, Neil as general manager, but he also announced Ted Nolan without Neil even getting a chance to talk to Ted Nolan. That was, and then he wanted me on the board, and he wanted Brian Trotty on the board, and I, and and who else? Pat Lafontaine to serve as sort of the board of governors. He said, "Charles, I just resigned as general manager. I, I don't want to be on the fucking board, you know." And he, we were riding around the parking lot of the Coliseum just before this press conference till he finally talked me into it, and I looked like a. I mean, I, I looked like a spoiled brat up there. My face was dragging. I was pissed off. I always had to be there. But anyway, I did the, that ran its course in what? What was it? Less than a month by the time he had enough of Neil Smith and he fired him. And Neil didn't sign the contract. So he got like 40 days pay and that was it. And then he had to go out and find another, he had to find another general manager. I said, well, you know what? You're going to be running the show anyway. I said, so why don't you just find somebody that you like and make him general manager? There you go, Garth Snow. Have a nice job. <laughs> oh, but what anyway, a shit show. Uh, yeah, what a yeah, fucking shit maybe show Maybe the biggest shit show of all time. Well, it was, it was wild. And, you know, I said the only thing we led the league in was convicted felons. <laughs> and uh, But uh, it was... You know, I went to run the business side, and, <laughs> and then about a year afterwards, he said, you see yourself doing this like for five more years? I said, there's no chance, no chance at all. I said, well, good, because I want to bring in my son-in-law to have him do your job. <laughs> <laughs> so so <laughs> he, he paid me for the, you know, for the rest of the year, as he said, and then he paid me for the following year as the evergreen clause, as he said he would, and then I knew it was the last check. But then they kept coming for another year. And he called me at the end of the year. We had a few conversations along the way. I didn't even mention the money, you know, the extra money. I, maybe it's a Rick McAlton mistake in my favor, right? 
But at the end of the year, he said, uh, okay, uh, you know, you know, you got the extra money. He said, do you need anything else? And I don't know why I said, no, I don't need anything else. I said, another year, I should have said, but. You remember could those, have signed the Rick the Pietro deal. Remember those girls back at the hotel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. sent them back over for one more rip. Yeah. 